good afternoon. Uh, I am Dr. John Nordling of Concordia Theological Seminary, and I'm in the Department of Exegetical Theology. I teach New Testament. And I welcome you to the Collect first and then the text for Easter 6, Series A. And it's kind of interesting that we're filming this on a cold day at the end of March, uh, indeed the Ides of March, March 15th, still snow on the ground. So this text, of course, takes us way beyond the culmination of Lent, that is Easter, but indeed to the end of the Easter season, when uh, the climate will be quite different and their flowers will be out in all their glory. So um, I always like to begin by uh, going through the collect of the day because that so often uh, presages what the text is about and gives the pastor or the preacher uh, direction and then go from there into the text itself. So that's what we'll do in the time that we have at our disposal. So, uh, Oremus, let us pray. Uh, o God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guidance accomplish them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, just a couple things. Uh, first of all, to notice that this is a, a, an address to God, and this always means uh, God the Father. That's kind of how I, how I um, identify. This would be in Greek, ha theos, theos with the, with the definite article often. Uh, the giver of all that is good by your holy inspiration. There's a clue to the season that we're um, uh, about to enter, and that is Pentecost. Um, so uh, today is uh, Easter 6a, and next Sunday will be Easter 7a, and then Pentecost is immediately after that. So holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, so we're asking, the church is asking, through the pastor who prays this prayer, that it might have the right thought, the right thinking, um, the, the mind of the spirit, indeed, which is what uh, the true gift of Pentecost is. And uh, a couple things that this um, uh, petition anticipates. One is, all that is good, this phrase, and we typically think of that in a purely materialistic way, all the nice things that we enjoy, first article gifts, if you will. But we're going to see that um, it's not necessarily so. Um, sometimes uh, it's talking about the things of salvation, um, word and sacrament, if you will. So I'd encourage you to look at it that way. And then this is, again, um, uh, uh, echoed by that you may think those things that are right, those things. Notice there's always the emphasis in Lutheran theology upon the race, the actual things of salvation, not just spiritual things. This is where Zwingli and, and Calvin got it wrong, but the things that are given in the Word and in the sacraments, especially the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and our, in the water of baptism. Uh, okay, that's probably enough. Um, let's go on then to the next, let's get into the text itself. Uh, okay, so um, it's a nice short text from John 14, 15 to 21, and I'm simply going to work through this now and um, highlight some things, uh, of course stress the grammar, and hopefully this will help you as you preach this text. So the first thing that the exegete notices when he or she looks at such a text is how it begins, uh, aeon, aeon agapita me tas entolas amas teresita, okay? And aeon, of course, is a particle, particle showing it's a condition and with that on there, we know that this verb right here, agapete, 
It could be subjunctive or it could be indicative, and we know that on signals subjunctive. So we have that in the protasis, and in the apotasis we have a future indicative. So what type of condition is that? Future more vivid. Future more vivid, yes. So this is the old uh, F more V that anybody who learned Greek with me uh, learned. There's the F more V and the pres gen, and that accounts for 90% of all of the conditions in the New Testament, and both of them show something that is generally true. So, how is this pertinent? Well, uh, Jesus in this passage is speaking to his church. This is from John 14, and remember in John's Gospel you have John 13 through 17, and that's called the Farewell Discourse. This supposedly is when Christ instructed his apostles. Now, in the Synoptics, Jesus gives his Lord's Supper, and there's foot washing. In this passage, supposedly, this is how it, this is thought of uh, by liturgical scholars, these are the actual teachings that the Lord gave to his church right before he was betrayed and, uh, and, and gave the Lord's Supper. So we begin then, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, um, first of all, this word entolos, uh, that's from entole, entolase, and every beginning Greek student learns that as commandment, as in the Ten Commandments. So we're inclined to look at that in the way of the law. But I would encourage you in this passage at least to think of it in terms of Christ's um, commission, Christ's doctrines, that which he entrusts to the church as being most important. And you'll see that there is in this text at least a natural um, uh, conclusion we have you will keep my commandments, and then at the end, we have the one keeping tos and tolos mu, and uh, the one having my commandments and keeping them, okay, that one is the one who loves me. So you have entolos uh, mu, and then this autos is modifying entolos. So you have a kind of a a chiasm, if I could call it that. Whoops, I guess it goes this way. Okay. And you also have the same word, teresita, you will keep uh, down here as well. Okay. So, tereo, to keep as a prisoner. That's what it means kind of in a physical way. But also to keep that which is most precious, most holy. Um, Christ's word and, and the, his deposit of truth. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, and then, uh, uh, let, let, let's keep moving along here. And I shall ask my father, notice the definite article here, which is often taken in a possessive way, my father, and he shall give to you... Um, another uh, comforter, okay? So this is very much anticipating Pentecost in order that um, he may be with y'all, met humon aston iona, into the age forever, is generally how that goes. Let's see if I can turn this off, uh, clear that, yeah, okay. Um, so there's the par parakletos, the, the paraclete, uh, the, the epithet used for the spirit, if you will. Masculine gender here, please notice. Um, in order that he may be with you, this just occurred to me, this methumon uh, in Matthew's gospel, uh, that recalls the promise, I will be with you always. Uh, and that, that, that methumon is also in the, in the Lord's Supper, too. Um, so uh, you have that promise that is, of course, in the real presence of Christ in the sacrament uh, forever. Ace ton iona. 
And that, of course, in John's Gospel makes me always think of John 3.16, uh, that you may have life everlasting. Okay, so, um, well, I will ask my father, and, and he will give you uh, another comforter. Now, you can see in, in verse 17, you have a comma here, and then by apposition, this word apposition, grammatical, app, it's apposite. Um, apposition, you, you, you have fleshed out who this other uh, comforter is, and it is indeed ta noima tes aletheos, the spirit of truth. That's who the spirit is, which the world is not able to accept or to receive from Lombano because it does not behold him nor knows him, okay? So it's not just that the world doesn't receive him, but the world cannot receive him, okay? And we often wonder why is the world so firm against the gospel and Christ, and it's because it does not have the spirit. So we do have the spirit in in, uh, in, in Pentecost and in the means of grace. Um, and then you have this going right on, humes. Now there's no, this is called the syndeton here. There's no connector here. Uh, but I would encourage you to take it like this. But you, see that very emphatic, but you uh, know him or it, this auto is neuter, going back to noima, because he abides uh, par humin, and he, and he will be among you. So look at that. Uh, para plus the dative, vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis you in your presence, and he will be among you, en humin. Now look at how I've identified this en humin I've put in red. Um, this is a preposition that I like, prepositional phrases. Often the prepositional phrases convey so much theology. And um, here they do, uh, for us, it could be in Haman, among us, but this is among you. It's a, it's a promise of, that Jesus is giving to his church through you, the pastor, who is opening your uh, hearers' minds and hearts to these realities that are given through the Lord Jesus. Okay, um, and then another promise here in verse 18. Uk afeso humas orphanus. I shall not leave you as orphans. Right? Uh, why? Because he's going to give us his spirit in Pentecost. Okay, I will not leave you as orphans. Erkamai pros humas, I am coming to you. Okay? Um, Eti mikran kai ha kosmos men mukatai theore. So still a little while, and the world uh, does not uh, see me or observe me. And then you have this de, which I would take adversatively, but you behold me. But you behold me. Now, this is true, of course, at, of the apostles at the. Um, at the historical occasion where Jesus says this, but it's also true among uh, the disciples now uh, who are formed indeed through your preaching and catechesis and will be until Christ returns in glory. But you uh, behold me. Uh, and then another wonderful promise tacked on, hati egozo, because I live also, you will live. Let me just see how much time do we have have you been keeping up? 14 oh, okay. So we got plenty of time. These texts are short. In fact, I'm going to finish a little bit earlier than you're used to. Um, maybe we can talk more about how to work with this homiletically. Uh, now, um, verse 20. In uh, ekene te hemera. So on that day, and naturally the church thinks, um, uh, in terms of the, the great day of, of Pentecost on that day, uh, because that's coming uh, two weeks from this Sunday when you will be preaching on it. 
But it's also very, uh, is it not, eschatological. We can't help but think of the day. Uh, scripture in the New Testament um, pictures the last day in this way, the day uh, this way. So on that day, you all will know, gnosis the humas hati ego into patrimu kai humes in amoi kago en humin. Okay, you will know that I, for my part, am in my Father, and you, for your part, see that's very emphatic, uh, are in me and I in you. So what's going on here? Well, I think the way to think of this is to think of it in a Trinitarian way. Uh, Jesus is saying that um, I am in my Father, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, the Father is in Christ. And then he adds, you are in me and I am in you. Uh, Christ abides with his church. Um, and we with Christ and Christ with us. And we come to the Father th through the Son. Uh, this is a, a Johannine doctrine well worked out elsewhere. Uh, now I'm probably at 15 minutes, right? Okay. Um, and then I talked about this passage already, verse 21. The one having the commandments of me and is keeping them, that one is the one that is loving me. Okay, so how do we love God? We love God by sticking closely to his commandments. Yes, following the law, but following Christ's teachings, his doctrines, um, the deeper things of the gospel that we're going to be learning in Pentecost and always growing and maturing in Christ. That's what this is talking about. And if you can encourage your, your hearers to think of it in this way, that's, I think, how John intended it when this was first written. And then we have this final little bit at the end and he that is loving me shall be loved by my Father. Okay? Uh, so if you love uh, uh, Jesus, um, we have the, the promise here that, that we are actually loved by God the Father. Okay? Um, and I shall love him and shall manifest myself to him. This emphanizo, to manifest, to uh, reveal himself. Um, we have this emphanizo here, and we have, where was it? Uh, that, whoops, what happened here? What? Um, we have uh, this, oh, this thing, what is the matter with it? We have this uh, theoreo uh, right there. Um, and I haven't worked that out. There's a, we're always growing in the word. Remember when you had Greek, theaomai uh, made us think of theatron. The theaoma means what you see in a theater. Obviously, theoreo is related. I'm not quite sure how. And then another word for revelation, I shall manifest or reveal myself to him uh, that in the holy things that the church contemplates, uh, uh, Jesus is revealing himself to him. Notice it's also singular. Sometimes he uses the plural, as he does here. You will keep, okay? That's for the whole congregation. But also for us uh, individually, too, I would say. Now, we're probably about at time, 19 and a half minutes, and I like to finish at uh, 20 minutes. Um, I've given you a number of things I think that you can jump in on here. And there's always more. Uh, I mean, obviously, one thing that comes to mind is the means of grace that oftentimes we uh, don't emphasize enough. Um, but we, what we have here is, 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 the, is the real Christ with his 
apostles who, and he is discipling them and making disciples of them, even as he is making disciples of your hearers through you and through your office. That's one of the things that you can certainly develop in this passage. But there's a many, many more ways, and I thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you.